Hey everyone, I'm Clue. Welcome back to our data pack project. So if you didn't catch the last one, we updated the trim mechanic in Minecraft, right? So this now reads Vex Armor and Health Triple Plus. Uh, for instance, if we go to Wild, it also has Health Triple Plus. If we move up, this is a different material, so it's slightly different color, and it has Health and Luck. So I just tweaked it so that now all the different trims give attributes and are reflected in the upgrade text, right? It doesn't just say uh, like redstone trim material, it now actually gives some more RPG elements. So basically what we're going to do for probably this little episode and the next one is go through the armor effects. So we've got, uh, was it one, two, three, eight in here, eight in here, and then the three new armor sets that I did add. So archer, gladiator, and mages. Mage in itself doesn't actually work. So you know what? We can, we can do this a bit differently. We'll stick the archer in here. And then we'll stick the gladiator in the other chest and we'll do one chest in each of the little videos and we won't worry about the mage's armor because it's it's not functional until i actually introduce the spell system i have in mind yeah so we'll leave that and we'll just go through these nine armor sets in two different episodes so the first one we'll cover this chest uh do i take them all out do i have enough room i do have enough room right if i go helmets first oh they'll, uh, they'll be in the opposite order that's fine I'm also going to make sure not to lose these because I would very much like to maintain them so I can do the shorts I normally do going over all these set effects and it is somewhat of a pain in the ass to craft them all. Anyway, starting off, we have warding. So if we stick the full set of warding on, you can see all the new color trims, right? So we've got redstone on our head, but then blaze rod on our chest, honeycomb on our legs, and then gold down the bottom, which is a bit more metallic, right? But yeah, so warding, there's nothing going on just yet. If we also grab out some experience bottles, which are not called experience bottles, they're called bottle of enchanting, which is kind of dumb, <laughs> to be honest. But, oh, that's the wrong throw. If we go ahead and throw them out, oh, we get some particle effects. Right, so as long as there's XP on the ground, our set is activating, and we're getting some warding effects. So if we do hop into survival, we can see it a bit better. We have extra HP because of the status boost, right? So the netherite leggings and the netherite boots give us health. But then we also have some hearts of absorption. They should go away, right? Perfect. If we throw it back out, we gain absorption back. So essentially, this armor set consumes experience and converts it into absorption, which is pretty good if you're fighting, you know, big hordes of enemies. You'll have a, a protective bubble of, of four hearts that will refresh and reset. Okay. Next setup, what do we have? We have Sentinel. I had to pick all the hardest ones to show off first, didn't I? Okay, so the Sentinel armor has some particle effects, right? But is not doing anything at the moment. If we go ahead and grab out some different eggs. So I believe it's the pillagers. I think it's everyone to do with the raid. So pillagers, vindicators, well, I don't have the room. Uh, evokers, that's the other one, and ravagers. If we go ahead and summon the different entities, right? This armor is best suited for protecting villagers, which I also need a spot for. It's a bit annoying. We'll get rid of the pillager egg. So if there's a villager nearby and then an illager, it gives different buffs. So in this case, it gives strength three as long as we're fighting a pillager. And then if we swap over to vindicators, it now will give resistance. Resistance for the vindicator and then evoker. Although the villager is no more, the evoker allows us to gain speed. And the last one, the ravenger. Did they get the villager? No, but he is out of range. You do have to be near the villager and the villagers in order to gain your buff, but haste is a new one. Oh, they dealt with the villager again. He's not going to last long, is he? But there you go, we get haste. So during a raid, this is the ideal armor set, if you will. After that, what do we have? Wild. Uh, wild's another interesting one. These are all, yeah, that's what I thought. These are all the not so great ones to show off first right they don't just have these passive effects so for instance you know nothing's happening with the wild armor if we stand on grass the grass will be get consumed go back to dirt and we get uh 10 seconds of haste five i think yes no this does have an added effect if we get close enough to this there we go he gets poisoned right so we're giving off these spores and it's poisoning all the different entities nearby so we go back to the ravenger he's now poisoned too so it's just a little bit of tick damage i don't think vexes can they suffer poison because I know most undead mobs can't, but I guess vexes aren't undead. Okay. Why does shift-clicking into your inventory do this backwards? I mean, it's not horrible. I can keep track of the armor sets we've actually gone through. Uh, we've done Sentinel as well, back there. Disorganized. Vex is the next one. Okay, so once again, does nothing. 
But if we find ourselves a Tome of Undying, so you do find this in the, the Woodland Mansions, right? Where you get the Tome of Undying. Still does nothing. Does it have to be an offhand? No. Hmm. This one feels broken. Which is why we do this testing, right? Uh, function, if we scroll down to A, armor set effects, looking for Vex of V. No, it is working. There's no particle effects. All right, let me double check a few things. There we go. All better. The uh, timer was set to the wrong info. Okay, so if we go ahead and swap into survival, we will not last long. In fact, we'll just allow the Ravenger to deal with us. Come on. Trigger the Totem of Undying for us. A few more hits. They don't do a lot of damage, do they? I always thought they did more than this. One more hit. Two more hits. Okay, so it pops, and I don't know if you can tell what's happened. Can I tell what's happened? Am I just going to lose again? I'm going to lose again. Oh, lucky. So we're meant to gain better effects, right? It's meant to upgrade the Totem of Undying. I should probably look up what the base effects are. Oh, now the armor's damaged too. Right, let's just do some testing. So damage, 20. This should trigger the Totem of Undying, right? It's not enough to actually beat us. So again, does trigger, and we did get instant health. All right, so that was the, the big thing I was looking at. So what is different? I think just the instant health. So it gives a burst of instant health, and it's actually meant to give some negative effects to the entities nearby. Uh, let me just read what it does. Okay, so when you hit one HP, it will give slowness and weakness to the entities nearby, and then it'll give the player instant health. That's why we got a burst of, of HP rather than having to just tick through the regen. And it also steals Tome of Undyings from other players. That's the other big thing. This one, yeah, like I said, the majority of these that we're going through first are the difficult ones to actually actually go over. Just in time. Bad vexes. They came out of nowhere. Took them a while, actually, to find me. Anyway, next set, Coastal, right? Is much easier to go over. But again, has a unique effect if you have a specific item. So these are all like... They have a, a secondary function if you meet this, the right requirements. So for instance, Coastal, again, we have a particle effect, but it does nothing at the moment. We go, actually it should do something. It should give, yeah, luck and water breathing. So it's made for spelunking, essentially. I think, personally, it's probably the most powerful armor set in this data pack, just because of the luck, because I'm going to make luck play such a big role in, in the special systems, the combat systems. Of the game so for instance with these status effects they uh, enable the status effects to apply more often but if we go ahead and get ourselves some sand we'll make sure it's going to clear no nope, we got just fine actually i think it has to be an offhand so if we have sand in our offhand we will periodically toss it out perfect okay so it minus one from our inventory and threw the sand out and these do do damage if i can get it to hit the evoker there we go. So it does do damage, and against players, it will blind them. All right, so just a nice little novelty effect. So a bit of, of defense, if you will. I was just playing around with trying to come up with, you know, special abilities for armor and, and stuff like that. Anyway, the next one is Dune, which is actually pretty useful because I need to put the sand down so we can actually see the effects. So we'll take this off. Perfect. Dune. While we're on red sand, we've got red sand particles. And it is giving saturation, bursts of saturation. Yep. If we're on not sand, it does nothing. Hence why it's doing wandering armor. And if you're on normal sand, well, the particles change to normal sand and we gain absorption. Then in itself, it has two effects. If you're at max HP, it gives slowness to entities nearby. And then if you're at, sorry, not max HP, max saturation. You have 20 hunches of, of food. It'll give slowness to entities nearby, and if you're at one, it'll give you strength, which is, you know, a cool little effect, right? So if you're fully healthy, you're outpacing everyone else in the desert. If you're weak, you're going to fight for your life, something like that. Okay, next up, we have Wayfinder. Another novelty effect. So there you go, it says... Wayfinder indicates your coordinates are 30, 72, and 38. And I'm curious why it's not doing the other effects. I think I might have, have broke it, right? Because I was cleaning up some of my commands, and I think the way I switched the commands to function, it's no longer reading the entity coordinates. Because it's meant to tell you the closest mob, the furthest mob, and any other players, right? The, the closest player. 
but obviously we're the only player on the server, so I will take another look at this one and we'll try and fix it up. There we go, all better. So it indicates the nearest mob, the furthest mob, and our own coordinates, as well as the any other players. It'll to tell you, it will tell you the closest player to you if you know it's on a server. And there's also the note particles that you know are depicted whenever the effect triggers. So it's just meant to find your way. I don't think it has any other added effects. All right, it's a very PvP or sort of like a scavenger hunting type of armor set. Okay, then we have Razor. I took this one literally, right? So Razor as an XP. So if we swap to survival again, game mode survival. So we have six there. Yeah, oh, you're gonna come after me. Go ahead and give ourselves some more experience. Set uh, at all 10, I believe it is. If we go 10 levels. So, yep, we have a particle effect. We don't have an actual effect, so it's not 10. They are disjointed because I think I upped it to allow this this data pack to scale higher. I think at 20 we should get these statuses. Yeah, there we go. We get strength 2, speed 2, haste 2. At 20, we go to level 30. We gain strength 3, 3, and 3. And then at level 40 should be the final stage. So it really helps to hold on to your levels. Strength 4, speed 4, and haste 4. Might be a little too great, right? Because we do a ton of damage now with strength for well, I guess the balancing will be all other mobs are high level and if you lose your experience then you're you know you're gonna suffer for it I need more ways to spend experience I think than to balance it out otherwise this is just going to be the go-to armor set okay take it off oh we got some fragments of life that's nice in fact that's kind of bad it should not be that frequent be a minor roll we shouldn't have luck at the moment but we still got one well, there you go, anyway. Uh, last arm set, Archer. Tuck it on. Uh, this one, because the trimming is enchanted power, gives speed and whatnot. Now, this one is a bit more difficult to pick up, because, again, I picked all the, the the worth... I picked all of the hard... I picked all of the difficult to, to showcase arm sets to go through first. If we set the display to mob count range, right, it's detecting entities between, I think it's... I, I want to say 10 and 20 blocks or something like that, or it might be 8 and 6 now, I've gone with the chunk. So, as long as there's enemies in a sweet spot for bow attacks, essentially, right, we get different particles. So, for instance, it's on 1 right now, so we have minor particle effects. If we can get to 2, we'll have more particle effects. If we can get to 3, if there's a sweet spot somewhere where there's 3 entities, right distance. No, at 0, there's none. Either way, what does it do? Well, well never mind, I'm going to have to come up with more guinea pigs we'll use husks and we'll stick them in pit no pit doesn't really work we'll just stick them out okay so we move far enough away mob count is now 12 and our bow will shoot some special arrows if i didn't get rid of it and crossbow too right so if i go first person the arrows now have the dragon breath particle effect and it did more damage than usual right because it's one shot or two shot in this case it should also, I can't see, yeah, you can see. So it's piercing through the entity. And the other big thing is it has no gravity. So there's three stages. When the mob count is one, and go far enough away. Zero there, just want one of you. Come on. There we go. It has no gravity. Makes it easier to aim your shots, right? And then if we go to two, somewhere. Oh, not three, I just want two. It now has piercing. I want a shot with an entity that it doesn't go all the way through. I mean, it doesn't finish off, so we can see it go all the way through. And we're still one-shotting. And then at three, it increases the damage of the arrows. Well, it seems like we're still doing a lot of damage anyway. Why is that? I feel like we're doing more damage than a normal bow would do, right? You don't usually one-shot husks on full damage. Let me take the armor off and test that. Uh, grab out a husk, friend. So without all four pieces of the equipment, that's, I don't think I, I mentioned that properly, uh, you don't you don't get any of the, stat, the buffs of the armor. One, two, yeah. Yeah, so it feels like the, the damage is triggering easier than it should. I'll we'll need to look into that. But yeah, that is the first lot of armor effects, right? Nine to go. Hope you enjoyed.